Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Viktor Guzun, uh, and uh, it's my pleasure to invite you to our workshop today. Our workshop is uh, organized together uh, by European Liberal Forum, Friedrich Naumann Foundation, Laboratory for Initiative for Development, uh, Moldova and Lipa from Bulgaria. And today we'll discuss about uh, how to connect municipalities in the digital era. We will discuss about best practices in Europe. We have speakers from Moldova, from Romania, from Ukraine, from Brussels. Uh, we have mayors, we have acting mayors, we have uh, analysts, we have a lot of people. We have officials from Moldova. So without uh, further ado, I would like to, to ask uh, Reimer Wagner from Friedrich Naumann Foundation for Freedom, Romania and Republic of Moldova to say a few words in the beginning. Reimer, floor is yours. Yes, hello from Bucharest, from a shiny, uh, warm uh, Bucharest to, to everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be with you here because it's, I don't know, the fourth or the fifth uh, project uh, in cooperation with European Liberal Forum about digitalization. Uh, it's not by chance that uh, we organized and proposed uh, this project because back in the days, six years or five years ago, uh, in a European Liberal uh, uh, Forum project uh, in Moldova, we started to talk about uh, digitalization and public administration. Then, uh, with help with our friend Victor Guzun, who is moderating here uh, and is the is the brain and the digital brain of, of our uh, our uh, project from Estonia. Uh, we invited a mayor and a county president from Estonia to talk to, to local elected in Chisinau and, uh, and in the country about how digitalization and public administration works. And for me, it was really uh, rocket science. You know, it was an, an, another world because uh, I, I'm too, uh, was city councillor in Sibiu for uh, eight years. And when we started digitalization there, uh, our first, I don't know, big achievement, uh, 2005 or something uh, like this, was that people are allowed to pay taxes at the postal office. So before they uh, paid their taxes in huge crowd, uh, crowds, at the mayor office, at the, at the town hall. And then the first uh, digital step was that you can go to the post office and they check how many fees or local fees you have to taxes you have to pay and they paid it at the post. So uh, we didn't have uh, the crowd. If we uh, look back today and it's just maybe 15 years ago or uh, uh, not anymore. Uh, it looks like a joke. Uh, it's like uh, looking to an old timer. Because today and nowadays, the possibilities are pretty unlimited for a, for a public administration to really be in the, in the service of, of public, of, of citizens. Uh, even if I look now to the, to the, to the town hall uh, from Sibiu, everything is possible. You have your digital ID, you make your request, you can send uh, all the paperwork by, by online. Uh, if I want to change my ID card, programming is, is made just online. It's not anymore allowed to, to really to go there. Uh, so uh, everything is possible and of course uh, the pioneer of, of, of these services and, and maybe the front runner is, is, is Estonia because all, all uh, public uh, service are, uh, are, are digital. Everything is, is, uh, is uh, digital there and uh, the, the advantages are, are huge. Uh, not to talk about uh, avoiding corruption, avoiding bureaucracy, avoiding crowds, avoiding the time of people, because time is, is really money nowadays. So, so everything is, uh, is possible by, by digitalization. And uh, to talk about this, 
we we proposed this project to European Liberal Forum, and I'm happy that they approved our our request. And uh, in this first workshop, we will talk about digitalization with a focus on 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 Moldova, uh, trying to bring experiences from neighborhood countries, uh, more or less, because maybe the experiences are 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 very very close and and better to to understand uh, of course we will have a, a second workshop uh, about may uh, major cities and hopefully if uh, the third wave of coronavirus allowed us or not we will be uh, in november present at our our final conference in 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 tallinn uh thank you being here and uh that's all from me but uh, as a former city councillor i of course will comment the one or uh, or the other of 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 the interventions Reimer, thank you very much for these words and for continually supporting the digitization in the republic of Moldova, romania and the, all the eastern um, european area so I'm passing the floor to Lauren Mason from European Liberal Forum to say two words. And I see that, uh, that Sergei Karelin is already from Ukraine here. So for the next speakers who we'll speak in Romanian, we have the translation right there. Okay, so please push this button. Uh, Lauren, maybe you could say a few words on behalf of European Liberal Forum. The floor is yours, please. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Victor, and good morning, everyone, also from Brussels. Uh, warm welcome on behalf of the European Liberal Forum. Uh, my name is Lauren Mason, and for those of you who might not know ELF, we are the political foundation and the think tank of the European Liberals. So we're working very closely with the ALDE Party and the Renew Europe Group, and of course, obviously of interest for this project in particular, the Committee of the Regions. Um, and, you know, as Raimar mentioned, it's um, an area that we've been collaborating on for many years. Um, ELF is very happy to be involved um, in this project, especially as Raimar touched on some of the key areas about digitalization and efficient public service really being at the core um, of us, for us as liberals, especially to ensure efficiency with public spending, but also to, uh, you know, to give citizens a chance to be better involved and to be more engaged um, in public life. So um, we're happy to be looking at a number of countries across Europe. Obviously, today we're starting with some examples, especially from um, Moldova. But I just want to say thank you to everyone for joining us. We'll be listening carefully um, for ELF and to see how we can take some of these ideas as well um, to Brussels. And I think I can hand back over to Victor to get the discussion started. Thank you very much, Lauren. Uh, thank you for your uh, continuous support to us. Um, now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so we will uh, have uh, two keynote speakers. Um, I am announced by Deputy Prime Minister of the Republic of Moldova that he will join in a short time or a little bit later, so uh, because he is in the consultation at the government right now. So whenever he will have a window of opportunity, he will join our discussion. But I'm happy to give the floor to Mrs. Valentina Kasian. Uh, one of the most uh, active uh, mayor in the Republic of Moldova, mayor of Strashen Town, and vice president of the Congress of Local Authorities from Moldova, the association which is uniting almost all the local municipalities in Moldova. And Mrs. Kasian will speak in Romanian, so please make sure you are using okay, this button or this button for the translation. Uh, Doamna Kasian, uh, ne de ce este importantă digitalizarea serviciilor pentru administrația publică locală, care este viziunea dumneavoastră în calitate de ales local, de primar a unui oraș din Republica Moldova și în mod special în calitate de vicepreședinte a CAL. Doamna Casian, vă rog! Bună ziua tuturor și vă mulțumesc pentru această oportunitate. Este un subiect foarte important și este unul din obiectivele principale ale administrației publice locale din municipiul Strășeni. Ne-am propus ca administrație publică locală, în primul rând, să eficientizăm aparatul administrativ, dar și să creștem calitatea serviciilor publice prestate. Dar pentru ca aceasta să se întâmple, am sesizat că, în primul rând, este nevoie de o digitalizare în contextul reformei administrației publice centrale și locale. Ultima perioadă foarte mult se discută despre această reformă, 
și faptul că ea trebuie să se realizeze cu pași mai rapizi, deja a, venit, a devenit clar pentru fiecare dintre noi. Este nevoie de interoperabilitate și accesul, rolul activ la bazele de date fiind un element cheie în procesul de administrare. Și aici pot să vin și cu un exemplu. Noi, în calitate de administrație publică sau autoritate executivă, nu putem astăzi să elaborăm politici locale eficiente, coerente, dacă nu avem acces la baze de date. Un alt aspect la care vreau să mă opresc, care consider că este foarte important, este elaborarea unui concept de e-guvernare locală, ca un concept de guvernare prietenos față de cetățean, așa îl vedem noi, care trebuie neapărat să fie corelat cu e-guvernare centrală. Al treilea aspect l-aș menționa ca instrumente digitale. De exemplu, programe de gestionare a patrimoniului, alte programe care sunt foarte importante în procesul de administrare, atât la nivel local cât și central. Și este nevoie de a crește rolul autorităților locale în acest proces, pentru că ultima perioadă s-a pus accentul doar pe autoritățile centrale și mai puțin atenție s-a atras autorităților locale. Acestea însă sunt cel mai aproape de cetățean și cu siguranță acest proces trebuie să, în acest proces trebuie să se pună accentul și pe autoritățile locale. În ultima perioadă am implementat un proiect cu sprijinul programului Comunitatea mea și partenerilor slovaci. Este creat un ghișeu unic în încinta primăriei și aici o să menționez mai multe avantaje care sunt pentru administrația publică, dar și pentru cetățean pe care le-am simțit noi în procesul acesta de prestare serviciilor. Dacă să vorbim despre avantajele pentru administrația publică, în primul rând aș menționa că avantajele transformării digitale, precum transparența, simplitatea, duc la o productivitate mult mai ridicată, la costuri mai reduse, la o creștere a veniturilor locale și a economiei. Digitalizarea, în primul rând, înseamnă arhivarea electronică a documentelor, lucru care se desfășura până la momentul actual manual și era foarte complicat și nu era atât de eficient. Odată digitalizate, ele pot fi căutate și accesate oricând și oriunde. Înseamnă acces și la date de informații nu doar pentru justiție, dar și prin date deschise pentru societatea civilă și pentru fiecare cetățean, ceea ce eu consider că este foarte important. Un alt plus este că digitalizarea administrației înseamnă, în primul rând, și eficiența în achiziții publice. Noi avem foarte multe probleme cu achiziționarea de bunuri și servicii, de lucrări și iată că acest proces îl văd unul foarte important în procesul de achiziționare. Asta înseamnă și simplificarea procedurilor, cei ce scurtează drumul de la nevoia statului la o achiziție, făcând totodată ca tot procesul să fie mai simplu și să fie verificat. În cele din urmă, digitalizarea administrației înseamnă de asemenea și responsabilizarea factorului public în fața cetățenilor. Odată ce fiecare achiziție este transparentă, este vizibilă, deja crește și responsabilizarea funcționarului public. Reducerea costurilor directe și indirecte ale administrației publice locale, dar și a clienților care apelează la serviciile publice. Îmbunătățirea comunicării cu cetățenii, la fel este un factor foarte important pentru a contribui la mărirea nivelului de satisfacție și transparență în activitatea administrației publice. Prestarea serviciilor publice în mod, într-un mod mai profesionist, facilitarea cooperării electronice cu, între autoritățile publice, chiar între noi, cei de la nivel local, dar și între autoritățile locale și instituțiile centrale și cele disconcentrate. Minimizarea interacțiunii fizice a angajaților primăriei cu beneficiarul, dar și excluderea factorului subiectiv, pentru că 
Cetățeanul nostru, de fapt, era deprins permanent să interacționeze cu funcționarul public, crezând că astfel va soluționa mai repede problema. Optimizarea gestionării instituțiilor subordonate administrației publice, că avem întreprinderi municipale și în situația când noi verificăm activitatea acestor întreprinderi municipale, este mult mai simplu să gestionăm cu activitatea întreprinderilor din subordine. Standardizarea proceselor în cadrul administrației publice și nu în ultimul rând, aș pune accentul pe imaginea care este mai bună în activitatea administrației publice odată cu implementarea acestui proces de digitalizare. Pentru cetățeni, la fel consider că este important cetățenii, în primul rând, digitalizarea administrației publice înseamnă mai puțin timp pierdut în interacțiunea cu statul, mai puțin nervi cauzați de birocrație, de servicii publici mai eficiente și mai ieftine, în general o viață mai ușoară pentru cetățenii din comunitate, de la obținerea unui simplu document până la autorizarea unei afaceri sau la o plată de impozite. Acces mai ușor la informații privind toate serviciile publice pe care le prestează administrația publică locală. Minimizarea numărului de documente necesar pentru obținerea serviciilor. Astăzi, noi, prin intermediul acestui ghișeu unic, avem pașapoarte la fiecare serviciu public prestat. Astfel, este foarte clar pentru cetățean să cunoaște ce, ce documente trebuie să prezinte și care sunt acțiunile pentru a obține un rezultat mai operativ. Orientarea spre alte instituții sau oferirea asistenței, rezolvarea problemelor care nu țin de competența noastră, de competența administrației publice. Încercăm să conectăm cetățeanul dacă problema ține de competența autorităților centrale sau altor instituții disconcentrate. Noi încercăm să-l conectăm și să nu facă naveta, să nu facă aceste drumuri mari pentru a-și rezolva problema. Minimizarea timpului pentru obținerea serviciilor publice. Acestea sunt doar o parte din avantaje, din beneficii pe care noi le-am sesizat în procesul de când funcționează acest gheșeu unic și conștientizăm că ele sunt, de fapt, mult mai multe și trebuie să dezvoltăm și să atingem acest obiectiv pe care ni l-am propus și este parte și a strategiei de dezvoltare a localității noastre. Evident că conștientizarea necesității noilor tehnologii de către liderii instituțiilor publice, adaptării continuă la cerințele cetățenilor, serviciilor publice online de calitate, sunt doar câteva dintre elementele de, de viziune care ar trebui să fie nelipsite din strategiile fiecărui stat și din strategiile fiecărei comunități în parte. Și totuși, țin să menționez că există și o mulțime de probleme iscate, nu din lipsa de soluții sau viziune, dar mai ales din cauza vidului legislativ și a lipsei voinței în acest sens. Astfel, de foarte multe ori, documentele emise online nu sunt recunoscute de alte instituții ale statului, bazele de date nu sunt interconectate, cei ce ne pune, ce poartă oamenii pe drumuri și iar semnătura electronică în Republica Moldova astăzi nu este folosită de toată lumea. O altă problemă pe care aș vrea să o menționez este că este educația cetățeanului, care din neîncredere sau din lipsa obișnuinței preferă să, să stea la coata ghișeului sau la coata biroului funcționarului public. Este un element pe care noi punem accentul și Încercăm să discutăm tot mai mult cu locuitorii și să promovăm, să arătăm care sunt beneficiile și să-l convingem că este spre binele lui, spre binele cetățeanului în final. Un alt aspect pe care aș vrea să-l menționez este că digitalizarea și transformarea digitală sunt procese complexe, transformative, cu implicarea în toate ramurile societății și Trebuie să ținem contul că este nevoie de oameni competenți pentru a înțelege aceste procese. În instituțiile publice cunoaștem că foarte este o situație complicată și salarii reduse și evident că avem și o, multă parte, o mare parte din funcționari cu vârstă pensionară și este mai complicat să se adapteze la aceste noi tehnologii. De ce? 
E important pentru a excela, trebuie să facem niște pași rapizi în digitalizare și, în primul rând, să punem accentul pe, pe niște aspecte foarte importante. Încerc să cultiv toate lucrurile acestea în cadrul colectivului. Trebuie să ne aliniem, în primul rând, viziunii Europei Digitale. Trebuie să implementăm proiecte de educație în utilizarea tehnologiilor digitale. Trebuie să fie integrate platformele și aplicațiile administrațiilor publice la nivel național și trebuie să scoatem administrația centrală și toate administrațiile locale din țara noastră din ceata vremurilor apuse și să le pregătim pentru un viitor. Pentru că digitalizarea statului se face în primul rând pentru a crește performanțele statului și performanțele fiecărei comunități în parte. Noi cunoaștem foarte mult că liderul necontestat în Europa este Estonia. Avem și acord de parteneriat semnat cu uh, o localitate din Estonia și uh, vedem cum uh, această țară continuă să rafineze accesul populației la servicii, pu servicii publice. Ne dorim foarte mult să implementăm uh, proiecte comune și să preluăm din aceste uh, bune practici, în primul rând din Estonia, pentru că ne-ați ajutat, pentru ce vă mulțumim să stabilim aceste legături. Și suntem administrația publică locală deschisă, care ne dorim foarte mult să digitalizăm activitatea primăriei și să ne împărtășim cu aceste experiențe, aceste bune practici cu alți colegi din Republica Moldova și nu numai. Vă mulțumesc! Doamna Casian, vă mulțumim tare mult! Și acum, colegi, now we have Mr. Iurie Țurcanu, Deputy Prime Minister of the Republic of Moldova for Digitalization. The first time Moldova has a position of deputy prime minister. This shows exactly that the uh, uh, Republic of Moldova has new priority. Mr. Yuri Tsurkano, we know that we are, uh, you are with us. Uh, please, uh, uh, if, you, if it's possible, please say a few words about why it's important to digitize the Republic of Moldova. What are the main goals of the government of the Republic of Moldova with the focus of uh, digital solutions for the local administration? Mr. Turcano, uh, the floor is yours, please. Uh, thank you very much, Victor. Uh, distinguished colleagues, this is a great pleasure for me to be with you today uh, here and uh, to talk about the priorities of, of this government in terms of digitization. As, uh, as Mr. Ambassador said, it is The, for the first time when Moldova uh, in, introduced this new function in the government at the very high uh, level, uh, that, that means digitalization is a recognized priority for the political class and the, uh, the maturity of the political class from this perspective is quite, a, uh, is quite demonstrated. Uh, this government, as You may saw in, in the programs uh, which we developed for, for the entire governance period is uh, um, committed to implement a lot of digital uh, innovation and a, a lot of digital uh, solutions for uh, uh, different actors, for local public authorities inclusively. Uh, mainly, uh, we uh, for the uh, last uh, 10 years, we were concentrating our efforts in creating digital platforms sustaining the uh, public service provision. As uh, uh, my colleagues said earlier, uh, this uh, public service provision is associated now with some difficulties, with, uh, uh, which leads to some physical presence at, at uh, some, uh, some uh, shops um, so, or some counters. Even if we introduce uh, the so-called multifunctional centers, still you have to, so we optimized uh, for uh, quite significantly the service provision still for in many, many cases, you have to go there. So we want to uh, change this kind of paradigm. In fact, we are shifting from, from um, analog services or from services which requires your physical presence to uh, digital services. So the digital by default principle will be applied to every new service which is introduced or every re-engineered services or modernized services which will be uh, included in the modernization agenda of, of the government. Uh, there is a process, by the way, uh, of uh, looking through each of these public service and uh, reorienting it 
to uh, citizens, for, for it to be a client-oriented, not a bureaucrat-oriented. What that means literally is each service is, um, um, is re-engineered in order to have less physical visits to content, to have less documents, even electronic, but still have less documents which has to be have to be provided by the consumer itself of the, of the server, service, and to use uh, intensively uh, <clears throat> IT tools in order to be as productive as possible. So during this last decade, we implemented a bunch of platforms which are very uh, well received by uh, the center of the government. We uh, optimized many uh, internal processes and external processes, by the way, uh, too, but in, in relation to the central government. Among these innovations was the uh, governmental uh, cloud, private cloud. Initially, it was a private cloud. Now it, it's being hybridized, where it has a private part and it has a public part. This cloud is capable to host digital solution in a reliable manner with all the securities, all the availability measures put in place. Secondly, it's a uh, data exchange infrastructure, an infrastructure which interconnects different institutions. And this is quintessential for the uh, uh, services reform, for public service reform, because only by letting authorities to talk behind the scenes, to exchange data behind the scenes, we will be able to exclude uh, physical paper which is issued by one authority and is physically presented by uh, to another authority by the, the, the citizen or the entrepreneur. Uh, another platform is about payments and uh, we had some advances in, uh, in the digital signature. We implemented following Estonian model, we implemented um, uh, mobile electronic identity. Now we see it is insufficient. We are diversifying these ways of, of uh, people being equipped with um, a digital identity. So we are creating uh, good prerequisites for us and good pillars for us to build this sustainable modernization agenda, uh, modernization of, uh, of uh, public services agenda. However, until recently, we didn't have too much uh, to say to local public administration. Also, we, we consider in many cases, local public authorities are those who initiate some very important events in, uh, in, uh, in lives of our citizens, and they have to play a crucial role in that. Also, we didn't provide too much of tooling or too much of data for them to uh, be capable to, um, to take better decisions based on data, based on, on the access, active access to, to different administrative data sources. What we uh, included in this, new, uh, in, in this new action plan, which we are being, cons uh, which is being consulted right now, um, until 10th of, 10th of uh, September, we included development of a concept, how we see a smart municipality. By and smart and digital municipality. By smart municipality, we mean uh, not only uh, these fancy things, uh, um, um, I mean, equipping municipalities with different sens sensors, collecting different data about noise, about public safety, about different um, uh, uh, population mobility to optimize transportation. But we uh, have to start from some quite basic things like letting public authorities to have a constant and uh, very uh, uh, efficient access to administrative data sources in such a way that the fiscal agents, uh, social uh, um, officers, social protection officers, cadastral engineers, uh, local councils, they all have access to the pieces of information they need. In this way, we would be capable to consolidate uh, digital capacities and digital potential of, of local public authorities. We are in a dialogue with uh, uh, the Congress of uh, Local Public Authorities. Uh, so we, we try to, uh, to concentrate, I mean, the center of the government is still uh, 
there is insufficient resources to 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 launch all the digitalization uh, campaign at once. We have to put some priorities. Therefore, we have to dialogue with uh, with those who are willing to to participate in this process. And uh, uh, this dialogue was uh, very productive during the last, uh, I would say, last nine months or something like that, uh, when we uh, were uh, introducing gradually um, so-called COOPS Center for, for um, uh, Unified Centers for Public Service Provision, which in fact is a smaller uh, equivalent of multifunctional center, but it is closer to the community where these services are request, requested and required. Yeah, so uh, with some local public authorities, 17 at this point in time, plus five uh, consular offices abroad, we are piloting the concept of groups. And the concept is, as I said previously, we're thinking of digital services first, but we are confident enough and we, we, we are conscious enough that not all the population is computer literate to the degree that uh, they can self serve or uh, they can consume the services by themselves alone. We uh, need this infrastructure, this uh, network of um, unified public uh, delivery, uh, public service delivery uh, locations, units, for people to go there and to reuse the same means, the same electronic services will be used by an officer there, but this time on behalf of the real subject. In such a way, we will optimize, from one side, we will, we will, we will optimize the effort of, uh, of not creating something particular for groups, still having the same backend processing as we have for any other uh, submission. Um, physical submissions or any other online submission. So unification is one of the key, uh, and standardization, of course, is one of the key pillars in, uh, in, in this process. So um, I would not deep dive into too many dimensions because of uh, us saving the time and uh, letting people to also to, to uh, provide uh, very useful information, which we are collecting, by the way, and we are, we are we are building our agenda based on this feedback, which we are collecting from different actors. Um, but I would conclude with a, with a, if uh, uh, Victor, if you allow me, with a public call to collaboration to uh, to co-create this kind of platform. Yes, we have a donors uh, reliable and and very supportive donors community here. But it is up to us to define what we want from these digital platforms and from these digital solutions. No one, instead of us, even if they have a worldwide experience from Italy, from UK, from Romania, from e everywhere else, no one will be capable to come with a universal solution which fits all the needs for the Republic of Moldova. We need a dialogue. We are ready to dialogue and we are ready to be as open as needed for this dream of digital local public authority to become reality. Thank you very much for this opportunity to talk to you uh, today. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm available for all of you. Uh, and uh, if, if the need would be, uh, Victor, please share my contact details and our office uh, contact details uh, with uh, with with colleagues which are interested in in such a collaboration, so we will uh, collect all feedback and uh, and uh, we'll have some follow ups on uh, on the subjects they are they are proposing. Thank you very much once again. Thank you very much, Deputy Prime Minister, uh, for your time. We know that your agenda is quite uh, busy this day, so uh, you find time for us. But before leaving, uh, this is exactly what we're doing. This to spread the world about the benefits of uh, digital transformation, but also to create partnerships, to create friendships, because uh, digital transformation is a all of society process. Everyone could contribute and no one could be excluded. It's a win-win non-political issue, which everyone in every country should uh, do. And, and this is exactly what we're doing. So we, we will uh, put together the practices from different countries, not only from Estonia mentioned here, but also from 
Finland, Germany, Romania, Bulgaria, Republic of Moldova, Hungary, Italy, we have here a representative of Budapest right now, and other European countries together with the YELF and uh, Friedrich Naumann Foundation. And we will organize a number of events. This is just the first workshop. In 29th of September, we will have the capital cities across Europe. In uh, November, we will have a big event here in uh, Tallinn. Hopefully, we will have offline, but not only the event, because we'd like to put together these practices and to see which one are most applicable and which, which could be used in different countries, not only in the Republic of Moldova. Because uh, it's not a universal solution. It's not a solution which perfectly works in Estonia, or I don't know, Sergei, could, uh, Sergei will speak from Ukraine. You know, it's different uh, uh, environment, different uh, countries, but I think this cooperation, this all of society is so uh, important. And of course, uh, speaking a little bit before jumping to the next session with our esteemed speakers, it's some very important uh, elements which I would like to say is that, you know, this pandemic uh, made absolutely clear before the pandemic, it was this idea that, you know, digital solutions is something nice to have, but actually this pandemic shows very clearly that it should have. This is not anymore an option. It's absolutely clear. It's an obligation of the states. It's obligation of the local uh, municipalities, including everywhere, in every country you come from, and uh, in every city you live right now, we're speaking right now, actually should introduce this digital solution. It's absolutely clear. But some elements are very important here that, you could have the you know fastest internet on the planet in your uh, in your city, but if you cannot translate this speed into efficiency for the people and for everyone, this makes no big sense. You could have like I don't know thousands of eGov solutions. Actually, Estonian practice showed this exactly. But if the penetration rate of this solution is not big, then it's no big sense of this. So if just one percentage of the people from Strasheng, for example, or from Budapest will use them, then it's no big sense of this. You could have the best data in the world and the best databases, but if these databases are not interconnected and we're not using them, this makes no big sense as well. So the idea just before coming to the next panel with our speaker is that the changes are here to stay. Yeah, so digital, it's already here. If I will ask you a stupid question, if you have a smartphone or a computer near you, yes, this is exactly a stupid question already because everyone has it. So we already live here. So digital transaction will fuel changes in all sectors with no exception. And I'm absolutely sure in the activities of local administration as well. And nobody will wait, Moldova, Romania, Germany, UK, Ukraine, uh, any country in the world, be certain of, about that. Progress will not wait for us, for anyone, and we have the choice to adapt to this quickly or to stay behind. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Deputy Prime Minister, uh, Madame Mayor, thank you very much for your kind words. And now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are jumping to our panel. So, we have two panels today. The panel right now will start. It's called the best practices and challenges in Europe. We have three speakers. We have Andres Yadla, Deputy Mayor of Rakvere Town from Estonia and former Mayor of, uh, of Rakvere. And Andres is a well-known expert across Europe uh, in uh, digital solutions and implementing smart, uh, smart cities. We have Elena Lasconi, mayor of Kimpolung Muschel town from Romania, and Sergei Karelian, project coordinator on e-democracy at EGAP program Ukraine. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's see who is here. Uh, okay, I see Sergio Karelian is already here. Okay, just give me an Andres. I know that Andres is exactly in the Italian airport flying to Brussels, if I'm not mistaken. Andres, we will start with you. Are you with us, Andres? Thank you very much, Victor. And uh, could you heard me? And, and uh, thank you to the Vice Prime Minister, to the uh, previous speakers for uh, this interest speaking uh, speeches and presentations. I'm really think same way, like Victor, you say, this digitization is already here already in our pocket, in our mobile telephones, in our, our local our authorities around the Europe, not only in Moldova, not only in Estonia, but everywhere in Europe where we have internet connection. But um, uh, I prepared some uh, presentation, very short presentation about my city. Uh, and if this event is supported by Committee of the Region, I'm same time the member of Committee of the Region and maybe uh, give some short overview about uh, the level of the committee of the regions too. Uh, 
could I start sharing my my screen? Sergio, I please know. allow Andres to share the screen. Okay. Andres, just just a second. Sergio? Yeah. Okay. Good to see. Yes, Andres, please. Thank you very much. I give some uh, very short, if you have very limited uh, time here, I give some short um, uh, overview uh, what we're doing over, uh, over, over city in uh, Rockwell, but we uh, start us uh, a little far away. Uh, we uh, uh, give today uh, overview how we as Rockwell, as local administration, we have organized uh, our services and functions uh, to the e-services, uh, how we use quite unique situation in Estonia that we have um, uh, only one smart house, how we use this, how we organized all the city council meeting, everything, and uh, maybe some um, new ideas too for the city planning, and uh, how the C-services help really to, uh, to connect uh, uh, connect to the citizen and uh, and give uh, more information to the, to the citizen to offer perfect, uh, perfect and online services for for uh, citizen and and keep them a less bureaucratic um, uh, bureaucratic border to uh, to using these uh, local services what we offer in Rockford. First of all, maybe uh, I give some uh, couple words about the uh, committed region, who is uh, strongly uh, supported the digitalization in Europe and not only in European Union, but uh, some uh, neighbor countries too, like uh, Moldova, like Ukraine, like other countries. Uh, and, uh, and we have like uh, 329 members with 27 member states. And in Estonia, we have seven members and uh, many of them uh, actively promoting the uh, digital uh, solution in uh, in local authorities level. This is just a short overview of how this committed region work, maybe uh, just for info information for other colleagues. Now I come back to the my city, uh, to the Rockwara, and, and uh, a couple of years ago, we are doing some uh, concept of the smart city. We have idea that we need in the city creative people. That's the creative people create creative regions and creative cities, and uh, and we have uh, uh, built uh, the concept of the uh, smart city of Rockwell, uh, what is uh, called uh, smartware. This includes uh, many of things. What is basic of the digital services is the sustainable city planning, uh, and we started with pilot area of our city center. Uh, we have um, uh, we have using different uh, digital solution to build this. This is content name of uh, smartware. And then the, I really uh, have about my experience give recommendation for our colleague in Moldova and the other countries to really think about this. To have some uh, practical concept how we can how we can really do and to implement this. We have building rock for the first smart house, uh, smart city hall. This is first nearly zero uh, level energy efficiency building here, but same time, uh, time you see here our city council room right now, and all our city council meetings are in digital level. Uh, we are voting in digital level. We have uh, all presentation, all, all, um, uh, all points uh, in agenda has using no paper, no paper series in, uh, in city council uh, meetings. Uh, in uh, in city of Rockwell, here is some picture mayor again how how this um, smart house works and this is really uh, we have two point of this the one hand of this is very energy efficiency in this 100 500 square meters uh, house use only the uh, geothermal and the solar panels and in even in the cold estonian uh, winter they use very less of uh, very less of uh, energy uh, and we building this even using uh, digital solution. We, uh, we building this using only digital BIM methodology. It means that all project was before uh, before we start building only in in computer. Uh, and we use energy in the level of A. This is one of case what I want to speak about uh, 
our, about Rakhmere and of course the our idea uh, I as member of the Renew Europe group in uh, committed region uh, we have strong ambitions to have uh, to implement the European Union Green Deal and plans to reduce CO2 emissions by 2030-40% and be a clear climate neutral uh, city till 2023. But this is the point of the other presentation. Right now I come back to these uh, digital services, what we use in Rakvere. Uh, this means uh, we have uh, all services in Estonia, maybe you know, uh, sure, I know it's basic of the ID cards and uh, and uh, we use different programs like uh, in cultural level, we use POCU, in the education level, you, you, you use Arno, in the city planning, uh, geo info system, we have uh, used the other services and all this is available on the uh, and website or uh, over city level. Uh, I will not start today speak about the solutions. Uh, what we're in Estonia, but uh, if you probably know, in Estonia, almost 99% of the services is uh, you, you can use in ID card basic, not only in local authority level, but same times in uh, government level. Uh, but uh, maybe I'll stop today uh, in the other very interesting uh, solutions, what we uh, try as piloting city to use as, as uh, using the space data. Space, space, space data, to develop um, our digital services for the planning and the uh, and the uh, land register. Uh, in Estonia, we have grand strong databases that's called HESTAP. Uh, uh, we have uh, we have here um, uh, databases for all uh, European space program uh, satellites like Sentinel One, Sentinel Two, Sentinel Three, and and uh, with last uh, two or three years. All this database is the, available together with the Estonian Space Agency for Estonian local authorities. This is quite interesting and, uh, and, and new possibilities for local authorities. And we can connect this all, uh, all space data services with, uh, with e-services, what we already have in the e-government uh, level. I, uh, I have see here some um, some uh, examples how this work, what kind of uh, info information you could have there. This is free for uh, for local authorities and uh, and like, as example we can uh, we have different level of the maps. We can uh, open the NDV level of maps, RGB uh, level of flats uh, with different colors card. We see online what is the weather services if you have. Uh, if a local authorities who have uh, mostly more uh, mostly in countryside, you you, you can see uh, which kind of uh, situation is the world territory. This is quite a new and unique situation in Estonia. How we can connect that with existing e-services with the space data? But uh, today we have many of great speakers after me too. But um, I just want to give some information how really Estonian local authorities especially in uh, our city. city of Rakhwar is not so big. We have like 50,000 inhabitants, but we still like uh, 10, uh, 10 size uh, bigger city in Estonia. And we really look forward how we can use this possibility, what we have in internet, what we have in Estonian government system. You really offer the better services for, for, for our citizen. Uh, and, and it's not only in Estonia, I think it is moving in around of Europe and not only in European Union, but um, uh, the other countries do like we do uh, today speak with Moldova, with other, uh, with other countries too. So for my side, they are doing very uh, quick presentation, but I see that I am only, only like um, uh, 10 or 15 minutes time. This way, if, uh, if you have questions or, or I am uh, happy to answer for this question, uh, please. So. But in uh, any case, thank you. And if, if you see it uh, in, in my short presentation, uh, city of Rakvere, middle-sized or even small, uh, small city, we are using all these possibilities, what the digitalizations offer for, for local uh, authorities. And I am strong recommendation in the local level uh, to the, my colleagues uh, in, uh, in other countries, in Moldova, and everywhere who listening to us right now, this please uh, 
uh, use these possibilities, not start with all of them, but some steps for step and really the citizen appreciate this. Thank you very much, Victor, those were these possibilities. And if we have question, I'm ready to answer. Uh, Andres, thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, I know that you are flying now, you're in the airport, Tallinn airport. So I'll use this opportunity to ask uh, two, we have two small, small questions. Number one, you say that everything in Iraq is very digitalized. I visited your city many times. I have seen just one person or nobody in the city hall. Even if you have a very nice city hall, but no one there because there's no need for that. So maybe you could say just a few words how you came to that. Yes, how population were involved in this particular, uh, you know, digitization of your city, a smart Iraq, as you say. And maybe, and there's just say a few words about the role of the leadership. You've been the city councillor, you've been the mayor, you are now the deputy mayor. How and what are these lectures, this, uh, you know, uh, uh, advices, if you could give to all uh, uh, listeners, uh, meaning the mayors and deputy mayors across Europe right now? The role of leadership, uh, Andres, please. Thank you very much, uh, Victor. And, uh, and of course, you know, Estonia is in general, very digitalized country and we have air services for every citizens. But uh, I am uh, really uh, want to say, as Victor, you uh, pointed, this is very important. If you have leadership of uh, local authorities as mayor or vice, uh, vice mayor, you must give uh, uh, examples to the, uh, to the citizen, really to, uh, to use them, especially for the older generation. They say, oh, internet, this is very complicated for us. I got not do feeling my, you know, sometimes you need to fill some social paper or 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 or, or something. But uh, you as mayor, you must say, it's very easy. Come here. Here is, you have, uh, you, you, can, uh, you can use this and push this button, push this button. And, and, and next time, uh, the citizen and people could use this. And this is really what's happened with this uh, smart house. This is like changing... Uh, we were uh, also were a member of the city councils. They have, a, a, first of all, they are little conservatives or bureaucratic. Uh, we have how we can work without a paper. This is not possible. But right now, everybody voting with e, uh, e solution. Everybody is uh, have the all materials for the city council meeting in e solutions, and and this is coming year by year, day by day. But the leadership is here. Uh, very very important to give like um, like uh, like uh, how you say in, like be forerunners be forerunners and 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 uh, I uh, uh, really believe that if you uh, as leadership give some uh, examples to people coming with uh, with you that's what we have. This is not only big cities, you know, big cities have more money and, uh, and uh, possibility to build up the digital system. But even in the small size city, like we have in Rockbury, 50,000 inhabitants, we have, like Victor, you say, you have been many times in, in our city. Thank you for, for visiting us. Uh, really, we are we, um, uh, not keeping people away, away for the city hall, but uh, the people uh, not, uh, not have a uh, need to come. And uh, but we organize any any other events and and, and try to be uh, active and attractive uh, in the other case. But really, recommendation for all our colleagues around of Europe. This is really what we have in Estonia. First of all, strong background for the government side, e-government services, and after them, a strong leadership in the in, in the local level. And you can use uh, and offer your services more comfortable way uh, to the. Uh, to the citizen. Thank you very much. Andres, thank you very much. And really the last question, because we speak yeah. about this all of society, everyone could be involved, everyone could propose. And just yesterday, Estonia proposed this test bed platform for the people across e the world to propose the best solutions. And my question to you, uh, really the last one, how you connect with the people in Rakvere, with the think tanks, with the ICT companies, with, I don't know, educational, with just active people, how you involve them in this process? This is really the last question, Andres, because but this is important uh, how everyone could participate. If you uh, if you uh, have uh, already existing e system, you have a, a very easy easy solution, uh, a very easy solution to send this using this uh, really uh, easy uh, easy way. What we have uh, 
everyone we have in pocket and and just share information and and give some uh, some uh, some uh, um, some advice or or, or give uh, uh, reco strongly recommendation that's please using them and this is what's happened in Estonia this this new uh, new solution is this is very very useful and uh, I hope this is could be uh, this start be very popular in in uh, in in Rockford too and and we as as leadership of uh, our city we do all the all the best to share the in information and and keep people in the board uh, I can say so. Andres, thank you very much. Have a nice flight. And uh, thank you very much. I need some time to hear the other speakers too. But but uh, anyway, thank you for uh, for this invitation and and this is uh, this very really useful seminar for me too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andres. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. It was uh, Andres Yadla, deputy mayor of Rakvere, former uh, mayor of Rakvere, and one of the most open-minded mayor I know. So now we are moving to the second speaker of our, uh, in our panel. Uh, we are inviting uh, Mr. Sergei Karelin, project coordinator of e-democracy at the GAP program in Ukraine. Sergei, please let us know why and how Ukraine did such a big, uh, how to say, jump in the last two years. Uh, two years ago, as I, uh, as I recall, uh, the Ukraine decided to create also a Minister of Digital Transformation, appointing also a Deputy Prime Minister responsible for that. And a lot of stuff started to, to, to change in, transform, in digital transformation. Now, I have seen a lot of stuff that, you know, DIA is already recognized as a platform for the vaccination, for the uh, passports and the legal... Uh, uh, the laws were changed in the, in the Verhovna Rada. And you know, yeah, Malatka, and you're launching very, very soon this uh, e-Likarna, e-health solutions. But I know that you were uh, especially, uh, you know, interested in developing digital solutions for the local level. And it's a lot of competition across Ukraine. Who is the best? Who is implementing the best digital solution? And I think this is very, very healthy. And also this idea of how important is the leadership? How important is to communicate with the members of your community if you live in a city or in a village and so on and so forth? Sergey, please let us know the, the, the lecture, uh, the learned lecture from Ukraine and share your views about that and the role of leadership and uh, cooperation. Sergei? Thank you, Victor, for your invitation and uh, uh, good morning to all participants of this workshop. Uh, and uh, it's very hard to say about the uh, digital experience of Ukraine in 15 minutes, but I try. <laughs> uh, let me uh, show uh, my screen and I will start it. Uh, uh, do you see? Yes. Oh, uh, it's very good. Oh. I have some problems for this. Okay, uh, Ukraine began its uh, own path to digitalization after joining to the Open Government Partnership Initiative, uh, which gave impetus to change. Uh, at the moment, five action plan is already being implemented in Ukraine, and the innovation of a uh, new period of uh, the plan uh, was the cities began to join to the initiative. Uh, this was facilitated by the fact that the after of the revolution of dignity, uh, a government state agency appeared. Uh, during the work of the agency, such documents as the concept of uh, development of uh, e-governance and the concept of e-democracy um, uh, was adopted uh, by Cabinet of Ministry of Ukraine. Uh, the principle laid down by the Open Government Partnership Initiative, namely transparency, openness, accountability and the use of IT technologies gave a new vision of the development to, of the state. Uh, the main purpose uh, of this principle is to increase uh, confidence uh, in the authorities. Uh, let me uh, show you this presentation, uh, how decentralization uh, in Ukraine uh, started uh, several years ago. Uh, 
uh, in, uh, after the revolution of dignity, uh, the decentralization reform began to work, uh, a complete change uh, in the principles uh, and priorities of the uh, work in municipalities conducted shock therapy for the communities. Uh, last year, the, the decentralization reform ended and the number of municipalities decreased from uh, 30,000 uh, to uh, one and a half uh, uh, thousand. How we were uh, alone uh, with the change uh, in administrative territorial boundaries, uh, municipalities increase powers and resources in loan uh, with the increase at the budget. Uh, during this time, municipalities learn new rules uh, of the game and increase the uh, competence uh, of uh, local government employees. Uh, but for effective development, uh, there was not enough efficient uh, improvement uh, and digitalization contributed to this. Uh, a new round of uh, development of digitalization was emergence uh, in Ukraine uh, by the Ministry of Digital Transformation two years ago. Uh, uh, when uh, President Zelensky uh, the, uh, uh, elected uh, on the elections and uh, uh, it started to change uh, of the government. At this point, uh, the figure uh, became uh, of a uh, leitmotif in Ukraine, uh, the digital uh, by default. Uh, we forever talking about it and uh, uh, communicate with all uh, that uh, digital is a uh, first uh, uh, must to be, uh, not another sense, uh, digital. What you say about digital? And digital, it's like uh, mm, uh, <laughs> like the song uh, forever, like hit the song. Uh, which we like uh, and talking about it uh, all of the time. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, development uh, of uh, GSM uh, communication, uh, first uh, LTE and uh, other things uh, through all of Ukraine. Uh, uh, development of uh, digital services uh, like uh, Dia, we have uh, online portal uh, when all people uh, uh, come to in and uh, can download uh, digital documents like you see uh, on uh, uh, my screen. Uh, all popular uh, services uh, and another things. Uh, uh, a main idea of all of this uh, to do a short. Um, pass uh, of people uh, to communicate uh, with uh, government. It's uh, very hard to do, but uh, we must to do this. Uh, we have a big country, we have uh, a lot of um, uh, people in our country, but we have a lot of problems uh, with this. Um, uh, and uh, we must to uh, try to um, solve these problems. Uh, uh, what we doing for digital gap? Uh, Ukraine have uh, mm, internet subvention. Uh, uh, Victor, please help. Subvention. Oh, sorry. Uh, we have internet subvention uh, for our villages uh, because not all of them have uh, fiber uh, in their municipalities. And we're trying to connect uh, um, uh, these villages uh, to uh, um, fiber internet and uh, other things. Uh, um, you can see on my screen uh, a dashboard uh, uh, where you can see online uh, how many municipalities uh, uh, to um, uh, to get uh, uh, the uh, uh, ideas uh, to connect to internet in different uh, part of Ukraine, uh, and now we have um, uh, seven hundred and twenty uh, communities uh, which wanted uh, to connect uh, the municipalities to internet. Uh, uh, 
Also, the ministry created a, a directorate for the digital transformation of regions headed by Vadim Bortnik, uh, which opened a new direction uh, for the development of digitalization of the regions. In the 17 of uh, the 24 regions, uh, deputy heads for digital transformation, CDTO, uh, have appeared. Their duties include building communication lines uh, for the development of digitalization both of the uh, horizontal level and vertically. Uh, so that communication with the Ministry of Digital uh, uh, digital Transformation becomes uh, systematic. Uh, the work contracts uh, constantly. It is important uh, to note that CDTO should not be political uh, figures, uh, but are political, uh, because the figure is about the development uh, of the entire state. Uh, and not individual political ambitions. Uh, we have the main goal uh, in the country, survival, and uh, ourselves uh, must the responsibility uh, for this is every level. Uh, and I want to note that without a figure, it is uh, impossible to carry out any reform. Uh, digital leaders must to be like uh, digital drivers. Uh, they must to communicate, uh, they like strategists, uh, they like uh, communication leaders, uh, they like coordinators of these projects, uh, must to be um, in all municipalities as for me. Uh, we're working on it uh, and trying to uh, communicate with uh, all mayors uh, that they must to uh, have uh, all uh, chief digital transformation uh, deputies. Uh, and if you have and uh, it's not be systematic. It can be uh, like a um, highlight. You can uh, do uh, one project uh, and uh, talk about it uh, uh, a few minutes, but uh, it uh, will not be a digital transformation. Uh, as for me, uh, we must divide uh, two um, definitions. One of them smart city and the next one it's a digital transformation. It's uh, a different because digital transformation is in like a basement uh, of your building. If you uh, didn't do this, uh, you can't uh, to build a smart city and uh, you can't uh, digitalize it, uh, digitalization of your um, municipality. It's very hard to understand, uh, but if you try uh, to do something, uh, your next level will be uh, a good position for this. Uh, uh, one more thing I want to say about the uh, digital literacy. Uh, Ministry of Digital Transformation uh, develop uh, a web platform, uh, digital education uh, for all people in the simple form. Uh, it's our uh, uh, rap singer uh, Alona Alona uh, on this, uh, uh, trying to say uh, uh, to check your uh, digital literacy on the platform, Cifragram. Uh, if you uh, did this, you understand uh, which skills uh, you're important uh, to understand and improve. Uh, and uh, other thing uh, I want to say, uh, sorry, I try and, uh, to get this for you. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay, another time. Uh, uh, another thing. Ah, oh, uh, it's a um, municipality uh, DS centers. Uh, it's about uh, um, uh, municipality services and state services uh, on local level. Uh, when people go to the centers, uh, they must to understand that um, uh, Ukraine uh, now uh, it's a beautiful country uh, and uh, uh, government is open to you uh, uh, like a habitant of this city. Uh, it's very um, different colors and uh, good designs uh, for people uh, and uh, uh, soft skills uh, for them, uh, how uh, government must to be uh, to all. Uh, 
Another thing uh, what I want to notice is uh, that the Director Act together with Swiss Ukrainian EGAP program uh, held the first regional digitalization forum uh, last autumn, uh, where new priorities of the, for the development of communities were uh, highlighted. Institutional development, digital infrastructure, uh, technological reform and the renewal of uh, computers park, uh, uh, development of open data, uh, digital skills, uh, development of it democracy, etc. Uh, at the beginning of this year's uh, uh, template for the digital uh, uh, programs uh, of the regions was developed uh, and uh, depending on the number of population, each municipality uh, can draw up uh, its own digital transformation plan. Uh, standard patterns of digitalization uh, for newly created communities have been developed, which is presented on the portal of digital uh, uh, dia, uh, digital uh, community. Uh, I try to open it. Uh, uh, it's uh, very hard to, uh, to find now. Uh, and uh, on this uh, platform, uh, we show uh, all uh, uh, templates uh, for new municipalities who want to start uh, digitalization. Uh, the platform of electronic democracy has been developed uh, and is working. This platform, uh, what you can see now, uh, works is almost every third municipality of the country. The total numbers of users approach it, uh, one and a half million people. Uh, the platform presents uh, such tools as e-petitions. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, open city platform, uh, participatory budget platform, uh, e-consultations platform and school participatory budget. Uh, it's a, a new form of participatory budget when uh, um, scholar uh, can um, uh, do its own plan uh, to develop uh, some new projects in, your school, uh, in school and uh, voted uh, for this idea. Uh, in order to have a full-fledged uh, box uh, solution for communities, a website builder uh, 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 for them uh, and the chatbot Svoyi. Uh, 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 you can see now uh, uh, one of the um, examples, uh, uh, new standard uh, of uh, website uh, of municipality uh, and uh, it's not a big work for programmers. It's a, a few days uh, for municipality to start to work on this platform and uh, uh, trying to do something. Uh, and the last thing, what I want to say, uh, uh, we work with Ministry of Digital Transformation uh, for development uh, of uh, the Madea uh, platform. Uh, because uh, I forever um, discussing with my colleagues, uh, which implemented e-services, uh, uh, for e-democracy. Uh, I uh, talked to them, uh, how many times uh, you registered uh, your child uh, on e-baby service? Uh, and uh, uh, they think and, and talk and move. Oh, how uh, many children you have. <laughs> but I say, if you uh, voting uh, several times per day for e-petitions, uh, it's a new future of your municipality. And uh, you can see and uh, talk about this. Mm, what I want uh, to say a few last words, uh, mm, it's very hard to start. Uh, it's uh, very hard to, to think in a future like in Estonia. Uh, when I first time uh, was in Estonia, I think in, it's like a spaceships uh, through uh, air go to down uh, and uh, it's very interesting. But I, uh, when, I was the, when I was there, uh, I think in that the simple people uh, want to do simple things and uh, they mm, don't want to, um, to think about hard things. Uh, it's a philosophy of digitalization of Estonia and we can do this uh, in Ukraine. Uh, that's why we, uh, uh, when we talk uh, about digitalization in Ukraine, we think in a few things. Uh, I don't uh, 
to get uh, my paper passport uh, and uh, another documents with me. Uh, I forget about it. I have an uh, idea uh, in my smartphone uh, and uh, I can use all these uh, documents paperless. And uh, it's very simple to do. Uh, smart, uh, uh, smart uh, uh, pitpas, uh, it's a very simple scene. Uh, I try and uh, to check <laughs> check bone uh, to uh, scenes and uh, it's for a uh, um, signification uh, of my documents uh, it's very simple to to do and uh, a lot of people use it uh, now we have uh, uh, nearby 5 million uh, uh, downloadings of uh, uh, this application on ios and android uh, and it's very simple uh, simple is our <laughs> new lifestyle Thank you very much. I think you touched upon one very important topic. We called it in Estonia, you see the flag is right here. We called it less is more. Because we are not producing something which would be, it's a rocket science. We are producing something which every person could use. So just to give you some examples, my kid uh, easily could go to, to take some basic digital services. He's six years old. And the quickest internet voters in estonia are old women somehow so this exactly proves that actually the design this user experience of these systems are made in such a way that a large amount of people will use them and we are coming back to what i said just before this session that if we if we could have a lot of them i discussed with one advisor of one uh, uh, president in one country and say what's the problem in our country I don't want you to name this country she said, what's the problem? We have 1,300 digital solutions. Yes, I said, you have 1,300, but what's the reason of them? If today during my morning uh, run, I have seen the queues everywhere in your capital. So what's the reason to have a number? If they are not well, well uh, structured, they are not interconnected. Uh, Sergey, uh, before moving to an, uh, our next speaker, I have a few particular uh, questions because from my perspective, what you are doing now in Ukraine, I think it's amazing. Yeah, I think how quickly you did it, in which way you did it, which political support you received from all levels, president, rather, government, ministry, local. You know, probably half of uh, uh, mayors in Ukraine, a big, biggest actually uh, European country, and maybe just one, uh, uh, one idea, which advises, from this big revolution, which we made in two years from now, uh, you could give to the, our listeners across Europe. And after the, your answer, we will move to Madame Mayor Elena Rasconi, who joined us. Sergi? Uh, as for me, uh, uh, a, a political uh, willingness must to be uh, through all the levels, uh, from president uh, to inhabitants uh, in a little village. And uh, mm, we forever thinking about it and digital uh, like uh, leitmotif uh, in all our songs. Uh, we understand that digital uh, it's one way to do uh, all the reforms. Uh, because uh, uh, without digital, uh, you can implement any reforms uh, what you want. Uh, if you want to do reforms uh, to be uh, more prospective, uh, to be more responsible for your country, it must be digital. Uh, any words uh, we can say. And digital leaders must be CDTO, like um, uh, this um, cluster of uh, drivers of uh, digital reform must be in all municipalities. Uh, without digital leaders, uh, it will not be um, good things uh, and they will not be um, um, to get uh, these results uh, what you want. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, insights, for your uh, answers. And uh, as we discussed, we are just in the beginning of this. So we'll be happy that you'll be involved in our uh, movement, let's say like this, to promote digital solution in the future in our next uh, project. Hey, thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, now uh, please allow me to introduce uh, Mrs. Elena Lasconi, 
the mayor of Kempelung, Muschel Town from Romania. Um, um, Madam Mayor, uh, as we agreed, you could speak uh, Romanian and right here, well, no, no, right here, right here somewhere, you could find the translation in, uh, in English. Uh, Donna okay. Primar, but, but, but I understand. I understand everything. <laughs> ah, yeah. uh, but but it's absolutely up to you. If you'd like to speak English, it's absolutely up to you. If you'd like to speak uh, Romanian, there is a translation. I prefer to speak in Romanian because it's my uh, my language, and uh, uh, I and think the, it's okay. And the most beautiful language way. in the world, uh, uh, Donna Primar. <laughs> Ok, doamna, doamna primar, spuneți-ne, vă rog, cam care sunt acele elemente de digitalizare care eventual le-ați implementat în orașul dumneavoastră, s-au planificat și în mod special în calitate de primar al orașului dumneavoastră, care credeți că este rolul liderilor, aleșilor locali, dumneavoastră personal, viceprimarilor, consilierilor și cum această interconectare dintre primărie, dintre municipalitate și cetățeni, companii IT, instituții educaționale, trebuie de făcut în asemenea mod ca digitalizarea sau soluțiile digitale să devină o realitate și o chestie aplicabilă. Doamna primar, vă rog. Eu cred că rolul fiecărui primar este și al politicienilor, dar s-a pierdut chestia asta, este să lucreze în interesul cetățenilor și să crească calitatea vieții cetățenilor. Și eu asta îmi doresc să fac. În fiecare zi, între 12 și 14 ore, eu asta fac, pentru că asta îmi doresc, pentru că pentru mine fiecare zi înseamnă că fac ceva pentru câmpul lung și România. Și sunt exagerat de româncă. Așa, pornind de la digitalizare, adică m-am gândit că tot ce o să implementăm trebuie să fie pentru a crește calitatea vieții câmpul lungenilor, dar... Înainte de toate, dumneavoastră știți probabil că avem probleme mari cu străzi de pământ, fără conducte de canalizare, apă, asfalt, fără rigole, fără gaze, fără cabluri îngropate. Și atunci noi vorbim de digitalizare și de verde și de eco și de... Doamne, iartă-mă, dar de fapt avem o reală problemă cu infrastructura și consider că infrastructura este inima orașului, sufletul sunt oamenii. Consider că infrastructura e inima pentru că dacă ai o infrastructură bine pusă la punct, nu mai că ajut la creșterea calității vieții câmpul în genul, dar poți să atragi și investitori, poți să-ți dezvolți orașul în care ești, iar viziunea mea este că orașul pe care îl administrez acum se va dezvolta pe turism și oamenii vor putea să trăiască bine mersi din turism. Dar, revenind la digitalizare, primul lucru, ca să nu te surprindă viața, din punctul meu de vedere, care trebuie făcut și pe care l-am făcut, este să te asiguri că ai internet peste tot. Și că ai fibră optică și că ai uh, uh, semnalul bun peste tot, adică că poți să prinzi din toate direcțiile. Că degeaba vorbim noi de tot felul de avioane, de digitalizare dacă tu nu ai pusă la punct fibra optică și să vorbești cu toți operatorii de internet, să fii sigur că poți să, exist, să existe și concurență și să poate exista acces la internet. De asemenea, mă asigur că în toate locurile publice, în parcuri, și nu există peste tot în momentul de față și vreau să implementez treaba asta și în toate spațiile vest pe care le vom face prin PNR și prin POR, să avem Wi-Fi gratuit. Cred că e importantă și asta. Ce am făcut? Un lucru care este o sinucidere curată pentru un primar, dar eu am făcut asta, mi-am asumat lucrul acesta. Am luat legătura cu niște băieți deștepți care știu să facă tot felul de aplicații și cineva chiar și-a dorit să facă un program pilot la câmpul lung până la sfârșitul anului să vedem cum funcționează. Și am implementat o aplicație. O să revin imediat la ea, dar de ce am gândit la această aplicație? Pentru că de când am preluat mandatul, am primit o grămadă de solicitări și au venit oameni în audiențe la mine să-mi spună că au spus că au o groapă, că o lipsă bec, o nu știu ce, în urmă cu câteva luni. Nimeni nu i-a dat niciun răspuns. Noi nu avem nici arhivă registratura electronică. Acum am funcționat registratura electronică, nu aveam. Uh, și uh, atunci m-am gândit, stai-mă puțin, deci oamenii, dacă au o problemă simplă, cum ar fi o groapă, 
în care poți să-ți strigi mașina sau să-ți rupi un picior. Trebuie să aștepte câteva luni, pentru că nu există bunăvoință din partea funcționarilor să le dea un răspuns în termenul legal, măcar de 30 de zile. Atunci trebuie să fac ceva în acest sens. Și o să implementez o, de luna aceasta o aplicație care se numește e mușcel în care oamenii pot să se sizeze absolut orice, făcând o fotografie. E foarte important fotografia asta, că ăsta este un filtru care se pune la această aplicație, cu capace de canal, gropi, bec, chestiuni de ordine publică, tot ce ține de poliție locală, Edilu se numește firma care e cu apă canal la noi în oraș, gunoi, cu tomberoanele ridicate și așa mai departe. Și în această aplicație, în momentul în care tu, cetățean al câmpul lungului, ai văzut că este o problemă, ai făcut o fotografie, ai trimis-o, vezi în timp real cine a preluat-o, când a preluat-o și când a făcut-o. Iar cel care a făcut-o trebuie să trimită poză înapoi cetățeanului pe mail sau pe WhatsApp să trimită poză că s-a rezolvat. Și în felul acesta, eu am acces la o platformă în care văd exact care sunt problemele grave. Pe, uh, am mai multe fleguri de uh, mai multe culori în care pot să văd uh, uh, care sunt cele mai grave probleme și să văd în cât timp se rezolvă. Uh, de ce este o chestiune sinucigașă pentru primar? Pentru că uh, orice primar de modă veche din uh, clasica scenă politică s-ar gândi să mai fie reales peste un mandat. În momentul de față, spun că este sinucidere curată pentru că tot orașul arată rău. Nu există o stradă în momentul de față și am peste 250 de străzi în câmpul lung, nu există o singură stradă pe care mâine, dacă aș avea bani, aș putea să torn asfalt. Adică să fie apă, canal, cabluri îngropate, ca să nu mai trebuia să te atingi de strada respectivă încă 15 ani. Toate lucrările care s-au făcut până acum au fost cârpeni, peticeni, toate bordurile sunt ciobite. Nu e, nu e bine ce se întâmplă. Dar m-am gândit că acesta este un prim, plas, un prim pas. De asemenea, îmi doresc, eu cred că salvarea noastră este transparența totală. Și procesul de digitalizare poate să ajute foarte mult în comunicarea cu, cu cetățeanul. Sunt multe lucruri pe care vrem să le facem. De exemplu, vreau să scriem pe program operațional regional un program de mobilitate urbană, unde să și asfaltăm toate rutele pe unde, pe unde o să circule autobuzele electrice, să avem prinse și stații de încărcare electrice, stații de așteptare, managementul ticketingului și... Digitalizarea ajută și la chestiunea asta, pentru că, pe lângă faptul că ai un control exact cine, dacă circulă fără bilet sau nu circulă cu bilet, așa, poți să, să vezi exact care sunt rutele, dacă există un minut de întârziere sau două minute, pentru că oamenii, în momentul de față, stau și așteaptă. Unii așteaptă o jumătate de oră, o oră, alții merg pe jos pentru că nu sunt acoperite anumite bucăți de traseu din, din oraș. De asemenea, cred că m-ar ajuta foarte mult digitalizarea și avem în, în, în plan un proiect de genul acesta pentru tot ce înseamnă deșeuri, pentru a colecta selectiv deșeurile. În momentul de față, chiar dacă există tomberoane pe care scrie hârtie, plastic, metal, tot le pun haland, dar nu contează. De asemenea, poți să urmărești dacă sunt persoane, pentru că asta se întâmplă în momentul de față, vin căruțe de pe la toate din comunele din împrejurim și descarcă gunoaie la tomberoanele care sunt puse lângă blocuri și poți să ai un control. Vreau să facem cel mai performant sistem de supraveghere din țară și anume, tot pe PNRR de data asta, cred că pot să încerc, dar și pe POR există posibilitatea pe, să punem camere de supraveghere în tot orașul, cu un dispecerat foarte, foarte profi, în ce sens. În momentul în care detectează o agresivitate, o, o mișcare bruscă, în care s-ar arunca asupra unui copil sau asupra unei biciclete, 
softul este atât de inteligent încât ți se, îți vine în față să te face zoom in pe imaginea respectivă și automat se și apelează poliția locală și se pot deplasa acolo polițiștii locali. E foarte important ca oamenii să se simtă în siguranță, să știe că copiilor sunt în siguranță în acest oraș, pentru că eu, ca părinte, asta îmi doresc foarte mult. Copilul meu să respire aer curat, să, ai, să bea apă care să fie de bună, de calitate și să fie în siguranță. E foarte important asta. Sunt multe chestiuni legate de digitalizare și multe care nu au fost puse în strategia de dezvoltare locală și dacă nu există în strategia de dezvoltare locală și în cea de, de dezvoltare județeană, practic nu prea poți să depui documentație pentru a accesa fonduri europene. Deci sunt multe lucruri de făcut și uh, au altă chestiune pe care vrem să o facem. Senzori în toate școlile cu calitatea aerului pe care o respiră copiii. Și deja am început cu un program pilot în cinci școli pentru a vedea cum funcționează, iar părinții pot să intre și să vadă uh, școala în care învață copilul ce uh, aer are. Vrem să facem foarte multe lucruri pe digitalizare, dar cel mai important ca să poată să funcționeze lucrurile astea, mi se pare că trebuie să facem să funcționeze aparatul din primărie. Și e foarte greu. E foarte greu pentru că, gândiți-vă, că atunci când am preluat mandatul, niciun angajat din primărie nu avea mail, adresă de mail. O adresă de mail care să scrie elena.lasconi.aromprimăria.ro deci, cumva, în comuna primitivă am fost, totul este pe mișcare de, de hârtie și toată lumea este obișnuită cu asta. Când le spui de scanner, doar de scanner, nu altceva, este ceva rău. E, le e frică de toate astea. Vrem să facem, să funcționeze, am cumpărat mai multe softuri, cred că vreo 10 tipuri de softuri pentru registratură contabilitate, impozite și taxe, registru agricol, patrimoniu și încet, încet să instruim pe oameni, că e important, că oamenii nu știu să le folosească, să instruim pe oameni și să putem să facem lucrurile astea să funcționeze, dar cred că va dura, va dura ceva timp până când vom pune la punct partea asta. Tot de luna asta o să dăm drumul la noul site al primăriei, iar aici, tot prin digitalizare, aș vrea să facem un spațiu virtual pentru fiecare cetățean, în care să nu mai facă drumuri la primărie. Dacă, de exemplu, vrea să-și vândă mașina sau o casă sau ceva, să poată să aibă posibilitatea să intre în foldere pe care să le vadă ce acte ne trebuie cum și să le poată trimite, unde le trimit, ce fac, exact să explice omului în detaliu ce trebuie să facă, să fie locul în care să își poată plăti taxele, impozitele și gunoiul, pentru că în momentul de față, de fiecare dată, la începutul anului, oamenii se calcă în picioare pentru a veni la primărie să plătească cu banii cash de regulă. E o provocare digitalizarea, mai ales pentru că orașul Câmpul Lung are o populație îmbătrânită, sunt multe persoane în vârstă care nu sunt foarte familiarizate cu tot ce înseamnă nou și digital și tocmai din acest motiv suntem în faza în care să deschidem un centru pentru, în care să învățăm pe oameni cum să, funcțione, cum să folosească toate aceste instrumente care le pot face viața mai ușoară. Am pe digitalizare foarte multe uh, chestii, inclusiv iluminatul public. Sunt multe, foarte, foarte, foarte multe, dar măcar să începem așa cu lucrurile astea care sunt cu adevărat importante, cum am spus, aparatul din primărie să funcționeze. Pentru că și dacă ăsta ar funcționa să presupunem într-un an, perfect, tot nu o să scăpăm de hârtii, pentru că nu există, cum să zic, aceste soluții integrate de semnătură electronică, vrem să facem semnătură electronică inclusiv pentru cetățenii, de semnătură electronică între instituții. Adică ca omul să nu mai meargă cu, cu hârtii după el, eu îmi doresc foarte mult că atunci când vine cetățeanul din câmpul lung la primărie 
să nu mai trebuiască să vină cu o copie sau cu un act care a fost eliberat de primărie. Deci în momentul de față, oamenilor îi se cere copie după uh, cartea de identitate. Fraților, dar cartea de identitate a fost eliberată de evidența populației de aici. Sau cu certificat de naștere. sau Nu, nu există așa ceva. Adică mi se pare aberant. Sau să-i ceri uh, copie după autorizația de construcție. Păi stai puțin că o are la acolo, că tu i-ai eliberat-o. Uh, se întâmplă, nu știu, mi se pare că totul merge pe un slow motion. Totul e într-o mișcare a melcului și uh, mi se pare că noi suntem într-un alt secol și, de fapt, uh, orașul se găsește în alt secol. Adică cu un secol în urmă, știți? Uh, și trebuie neapărat să facem cumva să funcționeze lucrurile astea pentru că și prea mult, prea multă digitalizare, dacă s-ar putea face, nu știu dacă ar ajuta pe cineva care ar ști cum să le folosească. Deci, uh, Trebuie, eu zic început cu pași mici. Adică, ok, avem viziunea de dezvoltare pentru următorii 10 ani. Mie mi-e clar unde vrem să ajungem. Dar cu ce mă ajută pe mine cetățean al câmpul lungului? Asta este uh, întrebarea și aici trebuie să vină răspunsul. Și atunci trebuie să o luăm cu pași mici. Hai să vedem cum să te ajut să nu mai vii să te calci în picioare sau să nu te mai trateze uh, cu nervi funcționarul de la primărie. Uite, poți să ai posibilitatea să intri pe internet și pentru asta te învăț cum să-ți folosești spațiul virtual. Am un centru unde o să te învăț exact pașii ca să nu mai trebuiască să faci lucrul acesta. De siguranță, toată lumea este interesată de asta, mai ales că infracționalitatea este mare. De transport, iar important, spații verzi, să ai posibilitatea să intri și pe Wi-Fi gratuit. Sunt niște provocări foarte mari, dar vă spun, suntem în Uniunea Europeană și din fericire, dar cred că nu am luat în calcul faptul că majoritatea dintre țările care sunt în Uniune sunt dezvoltate și nu mai au probleme legate de asfalt, canalizare, apă, gaze și așa mai departe. Eu mai am te băgați vreo 30 de kilometri de conductă de gaz. Mai am zeci de străzi de pământ. La mine, pe strada mea, trece vaca, oaia. Am pământ pe stradă, am noroi. Nu vă puteți imagina cum este când vin ploile. Deci, da, e bine să vorbim despre digitalizare și să facem și pași concreți, dar cred că avem nevoie de sprijin și pe partea asta de infrastructură care ne ucide. Vă mulțumesc, doamna primar. Uh, this is exactly what we are speaking about. To see how different uh, solutions from different locations across Europe could be used. And I think this is exactly the right moment to, to jump to the next speakers. We have a new panel just immediately. And actually we have uh, your neighbors, your good friends from Cluj-Napoca. And uh, I will uh, start with Juana Bozatu to, to, to share your, uh, your views, Juana, about your city, how you started, which kind of mistakes another cities uh, should avoid, and what is the right moment to start, and which is these uh, steps. And after this, uh, we will uh, jump, uh, if possible, to uh, one Estonian city. Uh, Heiki Hansen, the mayor of uh, Elva, is with us today. And we will finish with a big city, European city. It's called Budapest, the capital of uh, Hungary. Wana, please let us know how you started, how you made Cluj-Napoca one of the most digital, uh, if not the most digital city in Romania, which are your, uh, you know, recipe for this. Wana, floor is yours. Hello, thank you very much for having me today here. Uh, listening to uh, Mrs. Mayor uh, made me have a flashback from all the initial steps that we started this journey so all the topics that she mentioned are here are problems in any absolutely any city in romania and i think that we are very very far from having them solved in Cluj as well but the main uh, the main thing that maybe we uh, managed to do it already it was to uh, assume it to assume it that it's something that's not going to go away unless we do something about it and to put together our energies and work uh, in order to find some solutions. I need to be very honest with you. Cluj is a very 
very privileged city because it is a city of knowledge. We have here six uh, universities that offer us all the knowledge, expertise, and people wanting to test their mind and talent and brain in efficient and uh, concrete ways. This is why this is why after the, uh, having all the, the resources from the universities, we have the resources from the um, NGO sector and also from the business companies and. In the last years, we managed to put together all these energies and knowledge and try to come with concrete steps in order to uh, transform dreams and needs into actions and solutions. And in terms of digitize, uh, of course, we started uh, with the idea that we need to make it as easy for the citizen as possible. And uh, we looked around a little bit uh, to good practices in Europe, which are available. Uh, all European projects that uh, were based in digitizing and uh, bringing innovative solutions to public administrations have public deliveries, and that was a big uh, library and resource for us to, to get inspiration from. And every time we meet people in uh, events like this, that it seems to have tried and tested something in their environment, we con uh, connect with them after and try to see how much we can uh, transfer or learn from them in order to bring it to our, uh, our local needs. And in the same time, we are open to do the same with everybody, with Romanian cities, with other cities from uh, Moldova or from any place in the world, really. Uh, what we managed to do in Cluj was, uh, besides from the big, uh, big uh, infrastructure, digital infrastructure things that need to be done every place in Europe, you need to have everything mapped digitally, you need to have to use G's uh, technologies in order to control and manage assets physical assets in terms of urbanism, in terms of uh, patrimony, in terms of uh, uh, public services such as uh, highlight, public highlight, uh, lightning or uh, uh, waste management or parking places or whatever. That's the hard digitizing program that everybody does. There are available uh, uh, resources from the European funded projects and uh, there are teams of experts uh, joining consortium trying to implement and push, uh, these layers which are, if you want, the infrastructure of digitizing. What uh, we are doing locally, and maybe this is the, the experience that I can bring today for the, for the discussion, is the small uh, steps and small, small practical uh, um, solutions that we try to do bottom up in the city, uh, starting with the citizen needs. And in order to do that, we tried, for example, to uh, eliminate the, the need of copies. Um, we tried to, to um, put scanners, 3D scanners in all the registration office in order uh, for us to scan people's documents. So nobody needs to have a, a copy of anything when they come to the city hall in mm -hmm. Napoca. We will scan it on the, on the spot and we will uh, use it in order to submit that request that legally from the national level uh, forces us cities to ask for that copy. Even if we uh, created the ID, in Cluj, it's not our, uh, we cannot access it to copy it unless uh, the, uh, the person gives it to us because we have no right to use that database because the database is uh, an ownership of the state level of the ministry. But what we can do is not to ask for that copy, to ask for the original and have it uh, scanned on place. Next step will be not to ask it twice. At this point, we are not allowed not to ask it every time he comes to the or she comes to the city hall. But in the future steps, after implementing some uh, virtual ID projects that we are, uh, as we speak, working on, we will never ask it twice. We will ask it once, and we will ask for the permission to store it in a, a safe way, and then never again. Uh, once we have somebody's once-only principle, everybody knows about that. All of you are using it. I'm absolutely sure in different levels of uh, of uh, the uh, detail in uh, your city. Um, what we try to do uh, in uh, the second layer is to have every all requests, even if they come analogically, physically, people come with a written sub, um, submitted request. We try to digitize it. We try to scan it and to put it on a digital uh, track in order for everybody to be able to access it because not. Uh, it's not rare the situation that a person asks one thing, but in order to solve it, you need to go to five different departments in the same time or one after the other. And in order to save some time, it's really, really useful to digitize it and to have access to it, even if it's not 
I still need to, for the department, the first department to tell the resolution order for the second department to, to the staff. I still can prepare it because I see it. I see it's there. I know it, it's going to be a task for me to do it. So we solved the steps and the timing that it's uh, getting lost in the process by uh, get, making it accessible to everybody that needs to work on the same request. Uh, the biggest, biggest challenge that we have at this point is connecting with other institutions. And I uh, was so empathic with uh, Mrs. Mayor when she said that, because yes, we are inclusive. People do not understand that this door goes to the city hall and the other door goes to the taxes and taxes have a database and city hall has another database. For them, it's tax, it's imposed, it's, uh, it's something that needs to pay. They don't care if it's one institution or another that needs to submit it. They would like to have the same type of services same type of experiences in all the places and as we speak we are trying locally on a pilot in order to connect and interconnect with databases that will save people travel and even if for example it's in the public transportation if you want to access um, the free transportation for your kids you need to uh, submit a request but then that request needs to be uh, processed by three different types of database you need to establish that the one who requests for his kid is the parent, and he legally is entitled to ask for that kid, specific kid, that um, uh, transportation uh, uh, ticket. Then you need to check that it, he is a citizen in Cluj, not from another city, because the um, financial effort goes for the uh, local citizens. And then you need to check that he is a student in a school, because that's what entitles him to, to access the, the uh, free transportation. And then we need to make sure that the transportation company knows this item, this ID, this stuff can be um, uh, uh, allowed to freely uh, use the digital system of uh, transportation in the, in the city. And before last year, for example, this was an ordeal, an ordeal for the parents and an ordeal for the schools. And in the end, it got to be an ordeal for the public uh, employees from the uh, local company, transportation company, and the from the city hall. It's the first time that we are trying to put everything in the digital um, interconnection of uh, databases, and we try to, to pilot how this experience can work digitally. If it will be a success, next time we, you invite me, I can offer it to you as a, as a good practice. If it, if it will be a failure, I will know exactly why it didn't work, because we would have already tried. And I think this kind of mindset is something that we learned on the process for the last three years that we started to look at processes and see what can I do with this process to specifically move, move it into the digital. I think the main thing that we learned is that you need to be open to failure. It will not work on that logic, but it will work on another one. First thing is to have to open the conversation, to put yourself uh, at the table and start to talk about that thing. Then, of course, it's super important to try to transfer the perspective. I should never uh, look at a public uh, service just from the perspective of a public employee. I should always try to look at that public service from the perspective of a, of a user and of a beneficiary, because otherwise I cannot find the most intuitive uh, way which allows us to digitize it and also be legal. And yes, maybe if you ask me, maybe we fail 30% of our trials and we will not be so eager to talk about that maybe when we need to, I don't know. But that failure process was at the foundation of our learning and our gaining more trust in other type of expertise. For example, at the beginning when companies came, we all the time were very suspicious to look at them like they tried to sell us something. I have absolutely no uh, digital and IT knowledge so I cannot control if somebody is trying to sell me something for a higher price that the market has. But still, I need to put some trust in that connection, in that communication, in order for it to, to allow it to happen. Unless I trust the good will of the other stakeholder at the table, I cannot progress as a city. And uh, I think trying, accepting that sometimes we, we will fail and also gaining more trust of the other stakeholders that can bring other type of knowledge and expertise in the, in the subject and we can uh, learn. I can read as many books as I want. I will never be able to know all the digital technologies that allow us to get from this point to that point digitally. Somebody did a whole career on that and I should trust that they are with good intentions trying to, to set, uh, recommend that and not the other one. And then of course, it's super important to uh, enlarge the, ba the basis of people in the city in order to get in touch with project management. 
What I discovered as a coordinator of a department who's in touch with the cities and I have 30 people working there is that it's not enough for me to spend nights and read guides and try to, uh, I don't know, become a European project savvy person. It's, it's helpful, but it's not enough. I need to enlarge the, 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 the basis with my colleagues and I need them to do that effort as well. Because at some point, their bottom-up expertise is so much more important in the architecture of a, of a project. In order to go, another type of, of experience that we had in Cluj that, yes, we learn how to access European money, and we are doing this, we are doing a very good job in this. But after you access them, when you use it, is this used in the best and maximum um, content? of i don't know achievement you know and that's where i would like to make the extra mile uh, from this point on because i think if we listen to the people who are in charge who are sitting at the table and talking with the citizen they can give us a better architecture on the processes than we we are able to do as coordinators and the last experience and then i will stop because i talked too much it's uh two, two months ago we have a project called Cluj future of work and one module learning module in this project was to uh, try to immerse people with non-IT background from different type of public services uh, into the technology and the knowledge and the, I don't know, the, the solution that UiPath, you, you heard about UiPath, it's the Romanian uh, unicorn, and they have this uh, RPA solution, and we try to see what happens if you bring somebody from this completely non-digital mindset, which is a public service, and put it in the learning uh, context of the UiPath uh, methodology. And it's amazing. Our colleagues, without knowing NIT, managed to digitize and automate processes that I had absolutely no idea exist in the, in the city hall, because from the coordinated perspective, I was not touching detail in terms of mechanism, but they were. So they offered us three types of robots that never existed before in Cluj, and are completely digitizing and automizing some parts of procedures which before were ordeals for citizens. Juana, thank you very much. I think you mentioned some very important elements, the most important, the trust. So you could build anything, but if it's not trust, no usability and no critical mass of users. You said about failure, ready to fail. And I think from Estonia, the country where I, I, I speak right now, this is mega important. So if you are not open to fail, you will not develop. You will just stay somewhere there uh, thinking about, um, uh, you know, implementing Amazon in Romania in two weeks. No, this is uh, science fiction. You said about once only, so the citizens should not come to the, your city and uh, ask for the second time for the document, which municipality already has. You said about bottom-up and all of society, so everyone uh, could participate in this. But, but maybe I just have just one question, because I know that uh, Cluj Napoca being a powerhouse of digital services at local level in, uh, in Romania, it's attracting lots of people and lots of uh, mayors. And I know that the mayor of Chisinau uh, is together with you exactly right in this particular moment, immediately after this uh, and the delegation from Chisinau, our capital. You will join them once again to show your city and your solutions. But maybe just one question, because you could build anything in the Cluj Napoca. You could build the best possible solutions, but your citizens also need the interconnectivity of the system and you know inter interoperability of the system, which unfortunately not all of them are the property and are managed and administered by the uh, nice, beautiful uh, city of Cluj Napoca, but by other entities, ministries, uh, agencies, uh, state, and so on and so forth. How you are sure? that these uh, systems and these solutions which you are doing have the best possible connectivity and interoperability with the state system. And that's it, Juana. So the question, the, the, the answer is really uh, quick, we don't. Uh, for the last year, we worked for the digital transformation strategy of the city and it's publicly um, available for anybody who wants to, to have it. It's in Romanian, but we also have a summary in English. So we can provide it if uh, somebody would like to have a look on it. Uh, and that was the hypothesis of uh, the, the, uh, the subject that we started. How can we know that we are not working from bottom-up level in order to create an architecture of digitizing processes and systems and services? And then when the government and the national level in Romania will start, because eventually they will start digitizing the, the, 
the, the logic of functioning of the state. They will not use another language, another uh, architecture, another thing. We don't. But if we are not doing something today, it's a day that's lost. So we started with the risk that it's possible that we are working for nothing. It's not for nothing. It's for us because we managed to connect with each other. We managed to talk with each other. I gained so much knowledge that I didn't have last year. And if at the end, this will be the only gaining of the one year uh, effort of a community to put together a strategy of digital, digital transformation of the uh, public sector, this will be already something that we won and will never be taken away from us. In the same time, we are communicating with the national level. We are living in our country. We are the, the country. So I don't feel like the risk of speaking parallel languages is so big. I think that also the ministry, for example, we have a very good collaboration with the authority for digitizing Romania, and they know about our efforts and they come here and we communicate. So whenever big projects like digital ID, like uh, health insurance, like work uh, tracking and everything will start, they will know that cities in Romania did something and they will put us and ask us, I think, uh, at the table in order to see how come, how far have you come? What's your logic? Let's see if my logic uh, can meet at the, the middle way. And if this will happen, I think it will be amazing for Romania. Juana, thank you very much. I think the beauty of this discussion today is that actually we have, you know, we have uh, small, beautiful uh, uh, municipalities like uh, Elva. And Mr. Mayor will join us in uh, in a few seconds. We have like bigger cities, like uh, uh, it's, in Elva, it's some six thousand inhabitants. It's, if I, Mr. Mayor will correct me, we have like cities of 20, 15,000, like Rakver and Strashen. We have uh, a little bit bigger, like thirty plus, uh, as uh, Madame uh, Mayor Lasconi represented. We have bigger cities like Luj Napoca, and have a super big city, uh, metropolis of Budapest today. But this is exactly showing that digital solutions are available, should be available, and are useful for everyone. Doesn't matter. It's big, it's small, it's super big. And actually, uh, we will invite maybe you on a, also to our next uh, discussion where we will speak about European capitals. And maybe I'm absolutely sure that uh, Cluj Napoca could uh, show, and not only Cluj Napoca, but all speakers here could show some good examples to bigger capitals. Because this is actually not depending on the on the budget, for example, because Estonia is not the richest country in the world, but it's definitely the most digitally connected. Yeah. So this is the question of uh, of uh, leadership, bottom up, and understanding of the process. So thank you very much. And now I'm inviting uh, our good friend uh, Heike Hansen, the mayor of Elva, to speak from a tiny, small municipality in Estonia. How digitized it? how interconnected is with the with the state uh, solutions and what's the role of the uh, leadership of the municipalities uh, here in our beautiful and nice Estonia. Uh, Heiki, floor is yours. Thank you. I hope uh, you hear me and, uh, and you see me. <laughs> Good morning uh, to everyone and uh, I correct a little bit, uh, the city of Elva is, uh, is uh, nearly 6,000 inhabitants, uh, uh, but now we have a uh, much bigger municipality. The municipality of Elva is uh, nearly 15,000 uh, inhabitants. Uh, so uh, uh, I have a small presentation, I try to share it. <laughs> Sergio will allow you to do it. Sergio, please allow uh, Mr. Mayor to share the presentation. Okay, thank you, we see it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I will talk uh, a little bit about uh, our digital services and, uh, and uh, how we manage uh, them and, uh, and uh, what we think about them. Uh, uh, So, uh, first, uh, I think this uh, digital uh, services are, are very important for uh, open governance and, and uh, we like to say that uh, Egypt democracy. And uh, it's, uh, it's quite natural uh, for uh, us. Uh, uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, information and uh, communication technologies uh, 
uh, increase uh, government transparency, uh, responsiveness and, uh, and accountability. And uh, provide citizens uh, with uh, additional opportunity to participate in the political process, uh, ensuring uh, better political outcomes uh, for society. Our priorities. Uh, uh, we use every day the principles of uh, open governance uh, and we, we, we use uh, more and more digital tools every day and, uh, and uh, uh, we de develop them, them every day and then try to find uh, some new ones, uh, what we uh, haven't used. Uh, and uh, it's very important uh, that the information uh, uh, should be always available through different uh, channels. And, uh, and uh, of course, uh, it's important uh, that we can, uh, uh, we can address it uh, directly to the, uh, to the different focus groups uh, who need the information. Uh, and uh, and we, we move to, uh, to, uh, to this, that uh, all the services can be provided online. Not yet. <laughs> uh, what is uh, uh, e-service? Uh, uh, it is minimum data from, uh, from end users. Uh, that most of the data should uh, come from uh, different digital uh, registers. So um, if you can get, uh, or if you can print out uh, some application uh, from uh, from home page, from municipality home page, uh, it's not a digital e-service. If you fill it uh, and uh, send it back by email, uh, we mean that uh, the digital or the e-service e uh, or digital service uh, is uh, that you 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 got the pre-filled application uh, where. Uh, where is already all the information uh, what the system can uh, take from uh, different digital registers. And um, you feel it uh, there, uh, what the application need more, but uh, uh, we, uh, we not have it yet, but uh, we move to the, to the, to this direction that uh, um, all the procedure should be automatic too. For example, some, some more simple uh, uh, grants, what we pay, for example, uh, for the families uh, who uh, get the baby, then uh, we need to uh, check uh, that the family uh, is a citizen of our municipality, uh, that they have a newborn baby, and uh, and uh, it can be automatic, uh, the family uh, fills this application, uh, the system controls uh, that uh, all the information is correct, and uh, it, it moves uh, directly to, the, to our finance uh, uh, department, uh, and uh, they, uh, they pay uh, it out uh, automatically. So uh, uh, we not have it yet, but I hope we, we can start it, with it uh, next year. Uh, now, uh, of course, this uh, e-service is what we have is, uh, is very much like this, uh, what I told, but, uh, but, uh, but the procedure is not automatic. Uh, so uh, all procedures uh, online, invisible services, uh, and uh, it is uh, zero bureau bureaucracy. So examples, uh, what we use every day. Spoku is a web platform for uh, public services uh, and it is uh, uh, different applications and, and grants uh, and uh, it is, uh, uh, it have a connection with uh, identification with digital idea 
So it's a solutions, uh, it's a state solutions, uh, all the digital uh, uh, signatures and everything goes through, through this uh, ETO. So uh, ARMA is a web platform for, for uh, managing uh, educational services, uh, for example, kindergarten, uh, quiz, uh, and so on. Uh, Voice uh, is a system for uh, online voting. We use it uh, for uh, municipality, council, and government sessions, uh, and we use it for uh, uh, voting uh, inclusive budgeting. Uh, Artis uh, Amphara is a digital document management system. Uh, what is uh, connected with uh, different other systems? Uh, what I showed here. And the newest one, what we use is uh, Vera, it's, um, it's a budgeting tool and uh, to be, together with uh, Power BI, uh, uh, we have uh, an interactive uh, budget uh, on our website and it's, new re it's uh, renewable uh, once a week. So all the people can go to our website uh, open uh, our our interactive budget and uh, and uh, and choose what they want to see that uh, so and of course uh, communication uh, we use uh, very actively uh, our web page uh, of course facebook and instagram is uh, are very important uh, communication channels uh, we uh, uh, send out a weekly uh, electronic newsletter where we uh, talk uh, what we, uh, we have done uh, last week or what government uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the municipality council have done last week. Uh, weekly information where we share publicly uh, weekly timetables of our officials. Uh, and uh, we have a, a smart application uh, for sharing uh, official information for smartphones. A little bit about this uh, smart application. Uh, we desire to make communication uh, with the local government faster, easier and, uh, and more convenient. Uh, this uh, app uh, gives us the ability to share and receive information. Uh, uh, there is a very good possibility to share crisis information operatively. Uh, very good examples uh, from, uh, from Corona crisis. Uh, uh, through this, we can reach uh, our people uh, easy and, uh, and they in turn reach uh, to us easier. Um, and uh, the desire for the future is uh, conducting uh, short polls, voting through the app, uh, and uh, submitting appli applications. But uh, this will be a future. Uh, what opportunities uh, does the app offer to the users? Uh, the ability to quickly and uh, conveniently uh, receive information on our smart device. Uh, all kinds of information from, from municipality government, uh, communities, municipality job advertisements or, or whatever. Uh, app brings together various important information and links uh, to pages. You can uh, link uh, past uh, different uh, pages to, uh, connected with municipality, uh, even calendar, and, um, and uh, there is an uh, opportunity to give feedback to the municipality and ask questions uh, from, uh, from uh, our officials uh, and then uh, can answer them uh, very, very easily. Uh, and uh, what opportunities uh, does the app provide uh, to the municipality? As I told already, uh, it's the most important is the ability to tra transfer information quickly and correctly. 
uh, to uh, people's uh, smart devices, uh, uh, to share important and uh, urgent uh, information uh, during the crisis uh, to our residents. Uh, uh, and we can also share information only to share certain uh, areas of the municipality by location, by the interest uh, of the residents uh, or uh, to everyone at once. Um, uh, for example, uh, the HAP has a feedback feature where residents can uh, uh, leave feedback and questions. Uh, and uh, for example, it's uh, some uh, problem on the road somewhere. Uh, they can take a smartphone and, uh, and take a photo and, uh, and send it uh, uh, describes the problem and, and send it uh, very easily to us and, uh, and there will be automatically uh, the, it, it marks uh, the place uh, on the map to where is the problem and, uh, and uh, it's only uh, one minute to, uh, to fix the problem and then send it uh, to municipality uh, uh, So, and, uh, and uh, it, uh, it helps us uh, to uh, summarize the important uh, information. So, a little bit about statistics. Uh, uh, we started with, uh, with app uh, uh, at the beginning of uh, 2019. Uh, so, uh, as I told, uh, we have uh, nearly uh, 14,600 people or inhabitants in, uh, in Elva municipality. And uh, nowadays, uh, about uh, uh, 30, 40 people uh, are added uh, uh, to the users of the app each month. This is the number of new downloads. Uh, uh, we have uh, users uh, with this uh, app have uh, totally uh, 2,500 uh, 2, users and uh, about uh, 60 to uh, 200 uh, active users a day. And uh, during the COVID crisis, uh, there were nearly 300 active users a day. And uh, who are the users? Uh, uh, mainly they are residents of Elva municipality and uh, uh, pro from the age of uh, 26 to uh, 45, but also uh, we have uh, older people uh, from uh, 46 to 55. And of course, uh, uh, there are more older people, but uh, these are the main uh, groups uh, who use this uh, application. So, thank you. Mr. Mayor, thank you very much for your presentation. Impressive what you're doing in your uh, small and proud municipality, and we have Quick questions. Number one question from Tamara Chokina. Uh, what type of data does apps collect from their users? You mean your application? And the second, what is the backup communication facility for, let's say, hypothetical fail of mobile connection? Yes, uh, of course, uh, uh, we have a classical uh, communication methods uh, too. Uh, we, uh, uh, we send out uh, our information, uh, our, uh, it's not a newspaper, it's uh, what the journalists uh, do, but uh, it's an information paper, what we send out uh, uh, twice a month uh, to uh, all our, our, our citizens. Uh, uh, but uh, this app, uh, uh, not collect uh, so much information uh, about uh, users. You, you simply sign in and uh, put, your, uh, put your email address there and, uh, and that's all. It's uh, not any uh, personal information uh, what you have to give there if you start with that. Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. And just one short question. Juan Abuzato from Cluj-Napoca was so proud to say they have six universities there and they are lucky. 
and I'm quite sure that next speaker, Peter in Budapest is also lucky having a lot of universities, but you in a small municipality, how you build it? How you account on which kind of resources? How you build this to be appropriate to your citizen, uh, user-friendly, and uh, people will, will see themselves in your app? This is really the last question. Yeah, most of the applications uh, we uh, we not develop and build it uh, self, but uh, but uh, most uh, of the applications uh, have uh, built uh, together with other municipalities, and uh, and uh, we are not the only one who use this uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, digital services. Uh, uh, and uh, and we de develop uh, them uh, together with uh, with uh, other municipalities. Um, yeah, uh, sometimes it is expensive, but uh, uh, but uh, in spring when the Corona crisis was uh, the, this uh, highest level, uh, then for example uh, the doors uh, of uh, uh, of uh, townhouse uh, uh, or city hall uh, were closed uh, two or three weeks and uh, it wasn't a problem. All the services uh, worked and, uh, and uh, of course the social services, uh, some people uh, came in but, but all the other services worked uh, perfectly and, uh, and it wasn't a problem uh, for citizens and it wasn't a pro problem for officials. Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. You said about these in invisible services. I, I uh, visited your municipality a few times, um, meeting also you, and I really confirmed that it's really invisible. And you just say that even if for, the, for three weeks the municipality will be closed, nothing will happen. The municipality will function. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hansen. And ladies and gentlemen, so we are jumping now to our last speaker today, uh, last but not the least. Uh, we have uh, with us uh, for the uh, next 15 minutes uh, Peter Tranlam. Uh, municipality of Budapest service, uh, public service designer from Hungary, the capital of uh, Hungary. Peter, please let us know what's the situation in uh, your uh, city, in a big European city, a big European capital. What you are doing, which kind of the systems uh, you developed already, what's your plans, and how you assure the interconnections of your services with the state registers and services. Peter, floor is yours. And yes, I confirm that we see your uh, presentation. But please connect your microphone, Peter. Okay, I'm sorry I'm here. Thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, also thank you very much for the, uh, the presentations. Uh, they were really uh, inspiring and impressive, uh, and I'd uh, like to try to, to add something uh, to the previous thoughts. Uh, from my point of view, I'm uh, the service designer of uh, the municipality of Budapest. I joined uh, only one year ago, so I'm really new in the public sector. Uh, I came from the pri uh, private sector. Uh, and uh, I'd like to uh, talk about uh, about our approach and uh, our uh, challenges uh, uh, of becoming a resident first uh, municipality. Uh, let's start with uh, uh, with uh, our uh, situation now. Uh, two years ago. Uh, a new mayor uh, started his mandate in Budapest uh, with a completely new pro uh, program for Budapest, uh, a very new strategy uh, for the future of Budapest. And uh, we see that, uh, that, uh, that we have a lot of goals to achieve. Uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, it is not only because of the change, but it's because of uh, times are changing. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, goals to achieve, like uh, build a healthier city or uh, uh, or be 
becoming more efficient as a bureaucracy. Uh, and, uh, and these goals uh, uh, always uh, uh, can be translated to a wish of change. And, uh, and uh, these, these all are about uh, building something different, uh, uh, build new things or uh, to update and redesign all things. So uh, from my point of view, uh, uh, these changes uh, are all about innovation uh, in terms of, uh, of creating new things uh, that uh, uh, haven't existed uh, in the past. And uh, uh, our questions is, uh, our questions are uh, that how, how can we uh, innovate better? How can we manage these changes? How, and how can we uh, find good solutions for, for the new challenges and, uh, and uh, good answers for, for the questions? How can we uh, create uh, good services for the residents of Budapest. Uh, and uh, 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 our approach is uh, the human-centered design, uh, which comes from, uh, uh, from the private sector. A lot of uh, successful IT companies uh, uh, are following, following this approach. Uh, this human-centered design uh, structurizing uh, uh, a lot of things that uh, were mentioned before uh, by other speakers, uh, like uh, 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 like uh, uh, the importance of uh, researches, data, empathy, uh, putting uh, the residents in the center, uh, and uh, and, uh, and also uh, the experimentation of an organization, uh, like uh, uh, accepting the failures and learning from the failures, which was mentioned already. Uh, so uh, we'd like to turn the municipality uh, to a human-centered uh, municipality and to apply uh, this very well-structured uh, design process and uh, and the elements of this design process uh, to every part of the municipality, uh, even if we are talking about uh, uh, new uh, uh, new kind of e-services or or uh, or we are uh, talking about uh, public transportation or uh, cultural services, uh, we wish to. Uh, to make the municipality use these uh, processes to, to create uh, uh, new services for the residents of Budapest. Uh, but we also find, found out that uh, there are uh, uh, very important challenges uh, if we wish to uh, apply this approach. Uh, these uh, thoughts are coming from our uh, research. Uh, we spent uh, like one and a half month uh, with uh, interviewing our leaders in the munici municipality, uh, 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 like uh, 30 uh, stakeholders. And also uh, we uh, asked uh, the employees of the municipality uh, so, uh, so these thoughts are based on this research. Uh, these will be very, very familiar uh, for many of you, uh, but we found out that these are the most important things uh, we wish to uh, fight with. Uh, we found out that, uh, that uh, the problem is that uh, uh, many departments of the municipality just simply don't think that they are providing services. Uh, they think that they are only uh, part of the administration. They only collect the taxes or uh, sign the contracts or, uh, or uh, just uh, doing uh, some uh, background processes. They don't feel that they are providing services. 
uh, and also if they feel that they are providing services they don't feel that uh, uh, that they need to develop these services or develop them uh, based on the feedbacks feedbacks uh, they think that they are only operating these services uh, and uh, this connected this this is connected to uh, another thought um, which is that uh, that uh, most of the times our municipality provides services uh, uh, through uh, companies of the municipality through uh, other institu institutions uh, of the municipality so uh, in the municipality a lot of people uh, just don't meet citizens at all uh because uh customer relations are at the city's companies uh, these are the most important things i won't uh, get into uh details uh but i think that uh, uh, uh most of you uh know these uh problems uh one, one thing we, we do uh, in terms of digital transformation, when we talk about dig digital transformation, it means that, uh, that uh, we wish to save resources with uh, digital solutions. Uh, we work on a, a very new website uh, and we are struggling with uh, naming it as not a website project, but a service transformation. Uh, because uh, uh, we, we always have to explain that, uh, that we are not designing only uh, user interfaces, new user interfaces, uh, like you see, in, uh, see it in the background, but we also uh, design uh, very new processes, uh, very new workflows behind them. Uh, we need to have uh, a new uh, uh, content management process. Uh, we, we need to uh, create new regulations uh, to, 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 fully, to be fully compatible with uh, uh, user-centered uh, interfaces. And also uh, a huge thing uh, in this project that uh, that it brings in digital competencies and capacities for uh, the municipality because uh, 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 not like uh, a new website project which ends in I don't know half a year or, or a year or two years uh, we'd like to uh, build to start building something uh, that can be uh, always developed and can be always renewed like months to months uh, with new uh, functionality and uh, based on uh, the user feedbacks as well. Uh, the other pillar of our work is uh, that we uh, are implementing a service design framework in the municipality uh, uh, because of uh, the challenges I mentioned, we found out that uh, that for the transformation, for the service transformation, uh, we need to change the culture of the municipality and the DNA of the municipality uh, to say so, uh, because uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, to speak the same language. Uh, uh, every employee in the municipality. Uh, we need to know what we uh, are talking about when we talk about uh, uh, services, when we talk about digitalization, when we talk, talk about research or, or iterations or prototyping. So that's why uh, we, uh, we, we, we want to implement this framework with a uh, uh, service design handbook, uh, which can be used by any department in the municipality. And also uh, we will start an education journey, uh, which helps uh, uh, get uh, the details uh, and helps uh, to get some practice uh, for uh, our colleagues in uh, this 
uh, service design world. Uh, and uh, this picture is from uh, the first design sprint uh, in the municipality, uh, where we tried uh, a very new uh, uh, co-creation method uh, for, for, for our employees. Uh, it is not uh, really known uh, uh, in our municipality, uh, but with, uh, uh, with our department, uh, it can come to uh, the municipality as well. Um, and that's all on my side. Thank that's you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, we are finishing our discussion. It was very interesting how your process uh, it's done, how you did it through survey, to interviews, meaning this implementation of bottom up approach in developing your new system. And you say that it's not the website. And it's absolutely right because I, I don't think that uh, people need anymore this uh, website in the form of international informational board, you know, where you could see some information. Now the, the design of all, uh, it's called not actually website, but it's actually, it's a platform, it's a user interface where people could enter, interact with municipality. I think it's absolutely great what we are doing. But I have just one question. Yes, you are big city, yes, you are the capital, but how your system are interconnected with the state solutions, how they're interoperable now, or which is your plans of this, if you could say uh, uh, shortly, just before ending this uh, workshop today. Peter? Uh, yes, uh, as I mentioned, we are at the start of our journey uh, and uh, uh, we wish to, uh, we, uh, we wish to uh, start with small steps uh, and not uh, connect all the systems uh, at the start, but, but start with uh, some smart uh, forms or, uh, or, or better interfaces for existing services. Uh, so uh, at the first few iterations, we won't uh, really get into uh, interconnectivity. Uh, we, we, will, we will continue with uh, connecting our systems, not the national ones, but, but uh, the systems we have in the municipality, for example, for taxing or uh, or uh, or uh, uh, the uh, or the public spaces. Uh, we we have some uh, systems. We will continue with these, but not with uh, the national ones. Thank you. I'm absolutely sure this is the next uh, level because uh, uh, Mr. Hansen and Yad Mr. Yadla, the mayors from uh, Estonia, they didn't say about this because actually in Estonia, everything is interconnected already for decades. So we don't even ask this particular question because everything is interconnected. So it's like the, you know, just the life, how it is. We are just, we are, we're not even asking ourselves how this works because it works somehow invisible, how Mr. Uh, Mayor from Elva, Heike Hansen say. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for participating in our discussion. Our discussion was uh, streamlined on Prives.eu and our website. I think it was a good start of this uh, round of uh, events and workshops and conference organized by the European Liberal Forum, Friedrich Naumann Foundation, Laboratory of Initiative for Development from Moldova and Lipa from Bulgaria. And I uh, remind you, this is the first event. The second one we will dedicate for the capitals of the Europe. We will try to connect as many capitals as possible, just the speakers from different capitals. And Peter we will invite you once again there. And uh, hopefully we'll see some of, of, some of you the, uh, in Tallinn in November, where we'll try to organize an offline event. Once again, uh, thank you very much. Uh, wish you a nice, beautiful uh, uh, week ahead. And then most important, please be healthy and take care of yourself. And let's build the digital uh, uh, solutions and digital cities, digital um, villages, municipalities and capitals and countries, because this is a win-win for everyone. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.